look at that. That's a good one. Okay. S H O P. So those came in yellow for me, but I see they're green there. So 40 ask. So we would be looking for, let's see here. Let me see how we had that real quick. So it's obviously above print personality, in my, I think, and that would set us up for a number one. That's exactly. We'll be, we'll be looking for a pullback of, so is this trading in 20 cent increments? It is. Okay. So I would look for a 40 cent two increment pullback. I'm not so sure exactly what the print personality Let's talk about print. Yeah, so print okay. personality, best way to figure it out is that we're going to take the you know the filtered time and sales, and we're going to look on just on what average we kind of see as it prints. And you can see it's really kind of between two to three for the most part. You get a four in there every once in a while, so let's call it yeah. four. Let's call it four. So then we're like three times above print personality here, I feel like, at the 40s. Is that a good estimate? Yeah. And if you notice something, it literally right now, 50 cent mm -hmm. increments. Okay, it's 50 cent increments. So, so mm -hmm. I'll, I would expect three increments. Uh, it would be my calculation. Okay, about three increments. So yeah. now when we talk about three increments, let's actually, you know, kind of go and uh, set a price target. Where would, what would make sense? Because we know three increments would be 39, 50, 39, 39, uh, excuse me, 38.50, right? Yeah. Okay, so what do we have above here? Um, We have a, above here, yeah, like so if you look at my screen, yeah, what do we have yeah. right here above 38.50? Uh, just, I mean, you're saying we have a market maker right there? Well, we have, we know we have lines? orb lines. We have a print okay. line that's sitting here at 38.40. Oh, I see what you're saying, the overlap. Yeah, 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 I see that on the 38.66. Yeah, so I wouldn't set okay. my price target to 38.50. I'm going to set it to like 38.75 just because of the fact that it's going to be tough to get through there. Yeah. We're gonna get some uh, some some pushback there potentially. Mm -hmm. So if we pull down into thirty, so thirty eight seventy five would be close to our pullback target mm -hmm. on the short. But first, it needs to go up, right? At this point, it doesn't need to go up anymore. Number one okay. trade could just happen straight from forty, but the higher it gets, the further away from where it needs to be, which is down here the higher yeah. the percentage your trigger is going to be or that your trade is going to be. Okay. So now we're just, now we're waiting for a trigger. That's it. To the okay. downside. So these 40 bids right there at print personality, I see those come in. I see the, well, that that's kind of mixed right there, the next packet. Um, so we're just waiting now for a trigger. That's it. And we want to have our order ready too. Yeah. So because at this point now, it's just all it is is time to anticipate a trade. Okay, so we're just – so at this point, I should be on standby mode watching the prints to see if something changes my game plan from what it is I, at this point, right? See, this is one of those situations with this many ask prints at 40. Uh -huh. Is there much that's going to come out that's going to change your thought process? I don't think so. I, I, I'm not – you know, you would have to have something – kind of crazy start to happen to change that thought process because that's just huge overprint personality. It's also a psychological yeah. level, which is a great addition to add for the percentage of our trade. The 40 mark, right? Mm-hmm, because 40 is okay. a psychological level. Yeah. Um, so, so I guess this is where I get a little confused. Right? I just don't know. Like the time frame, what I think about is we're, two, we're three times above print personality so with those and those prints would be our controlling prints would we expect a longer time frame then because it's higher than that much higher than print personality like a little longer we're going to expect or, a longer time frame for the stock to go up because okay. right here what this person at 40 is telling us is that they're looking to build that's yeah. what they told us by printing like this so we know that yeah. they have to build first to the downside to then come back up to those prints at 40. So in so the short for our term, number one, oh sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I finish your. Okay, your... so so from our number one, once we get down close to our target of that thirty-eight seventy-five, we're going to be ready to switch into a number four trade back to the upside. Absolutely, theoretically. Theoretically, now, that, trigger, yes. that trigger could take a long time. We there's no 
right now we can't estimate what that trigger is because we don't know because there's no prints, Ex right? Exactly, yeah. So when it okay. gets to that spot, that's a spot that we're going to be looking for a trigger. But, you know, it, it might not just all of a sudden hits 38.50 and then boom, we get a beautiful trigger going to the upside. But that's the spot like it doesn't we have would. To be today, right? It doesn't have to be today. There's nothing that says uh, it has to be any time, right? No, I mean, but see, that's like a lot of prints, but it's not a crazy amount of prints. So at the same time, today is very possible. It really comes down to them being able to build. So the monetary amount we're looking to okay. come down and it's right around these orb lines. So once it gets down to here, that's when it's acceptable for us to look for a high percentage for it to go back to the upside. Back to the upside. But if, okay, and then if it was like six, like six or seven times above print personality, we would expect a much longer time frame for it to come back up. Yeah, because we're going to be expecting a much larger pullback, too. Okay, yeah. Calculation changes. It comes down to like 37 or 36.50 or something like that. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Okay. The bigger they show, so you got to th think of the iceberg. Okay, everything's like the tip of the iceberg. So the bigger they show, the, the more that they show us, the more mm -hmm. there actually is within that position. So like we see these 40 prints and think like, you know, those are pretty big prints. In reality, the prints that are actually happening for this person's position are just astronomically bigger. Okay. And I got one, I guess I got a question with this scenario. I mean, I, cause it doesn't come up, I guess right now with as much a uh, lack of volume, but like if we had those 40 prints and then we had larger controlling prints, like, I don't know, bid prints or something, would that mean that we have another market maker that has a short-term game plan inside of the long-term game plan? Or do we reevaluate things then? So everything now will be interpreted through the eyes of the person that's looking to build at the 40 level. So if we have another, you know, got controlling prints or that, or that come into the stock, they're going to be interpreted through how what what needs to happen from that guy at the 40. Now, that okay. could be them still, you know, doing something with their position. It could be a different market maker, but you're going to notice that they, they align. So, like, if we were to see bid prints coming in right now at 40, okay, yeah. that's not great for the move down right this second, but it's telling us that somebody, after it pops up from those bid prints, that somebody's actually getting ready to short this stock up here because they know the guy at 40 is looking to build. Yeah. So, and, they're and essentially doing the same thing we would be doing by taking a number one trade. Gotcha. And if gotcha. you have someone yeah. taking a number one trade and someone looking to build, see how they align with what they're looking to do? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because they've got they, – they're, they're going in the same direction. And so with those 94s, do you see those 94s right there, the mm -hmm. 39 94s? Yep. Absolutely. Look, okay, so these are – they're not controlling, but they're, they're above print personality. Um, mm -hmm. So – that tells us the pullback's going to be smaller. Not smaller. The time frame. Sorry, the time frame of the pullback is going to be shorter. Uh, quicker. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So after we see them kind of jump up a little bit from those 30, uh, 3994 prints, okay, then it's telling us that we're getting closer to the time frame of when they're going to be pulling it back to actually be able to, you know, start that building phase. Okay, so. Then we see these prints come. So right now, so we so we would expect a quick pull up, a, a quicker pull up to pull back so, down from those 39.94. There's, there's another thing you have to see. What is relative? What's quick? You know, so in this stock, yeah, relative to the way that it's trading, quick is kind of slow. See how okay. it kind of like it lazily develops. So quicker than what our than what the 40 alone told us. Okay. So pretty much at any moment right now, we could be taking a trigger to the downside. Okay, that okay. So I shouldn't necessarily expect this to go up more. It's more that I'm at this point. I'm waiting for that trigger. That's all. Well, I mean, if if you look at the bid prints that just came in right here, they're way over print personality, thirty nine yeah. ninety four. So you know, a little pull up from them, yeah. But I mean, there's no real reason for the stock to have to continue to keep going, keep going up. Gotcha. But now I also notice the volume is starting to die off. So. It is. So now I need to just pay attention to see if what's going to happen there too, because we're going to need volume regardless, right? Yeah. So this is one of those situations you have to think. Does volume is definitely decreasing at the moment, but it is 10:03. Do we oh. statistically think that this stock is going to stop trading today, and all of a sudden we're just going to see volume start to die out, and it's just done? No. 
No. So no. this, this right lack in volume is actually forming a volume pattern for us to look for a trigger Perfect. and give us the exact asking, amount we're looking for. Yeah, I've noticed this happen a few times where the volume will start slowing down and then all of a sudden we'll get some action and then the trigger comes or the move comes. So now we have 40 25s. Mm -hmm. So that's at a minor level. Mm -hmm. um, so now I'm waiting to see what comes in from there. Yeah, well, 40, 25, it's not, ex it's not really extending anything. It's definitely, I mean, yeah. we know the buying is towards the upside, but at this point, it's just, you know, it's somebody well, yeah, coming in. Some, yeah, if I had stuff over like 27s, 28s, that would tell me that I have an extension of the trade, right? Mm-hmm. Well, okay. right now, like you can see, the money flow is definitely still starting to buying after it started putting in that selling. So, yeah. again, it's really just showing us that this move to the upside right now still is showing us building needs to come back in. And we're seeing the selling. So, again, right now, there's not much that can come into the stock to change the opinion that we're going to need a nice pullback from this 40 and be looking for a trigger down. Okay. And I see that we picked up some volume to come out of that little valley that we were kind of in. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's safe to judge that. So it's just a little bit high, but I mean, there's really nothing here yet. So now we're in this this situation that we were in yesterday when we were talking about, I believe it was RBLX, where mm -hmm. it, it's now built a consolidation here. So, yeah. So we don't want to trade this going into the to that level anymore. We either want it to get far away back to the upside to then be a, like, you know, in a regular move to then take it to the downside. Or, OK, we pay a little bit more for extra confirmation and we'll look for a trigger underneath this or blind. Ye oh, underneath. Could you? Yeah, got it. OK. The, right. There. OK. Like now, like now we have. Mm -hmm. OK, so. But I got that. OK, that's all mixed. So it's hard for me to interpret personally. But um, so is the that thing our is, trigger? This is completely mixed, right? Yeah. But what? why does that matter? It doesn't matter. Right? We ignore it. Yeah. I mean, I don't. There's nothing there that I care about. So, nothing so is I'm trying to understand personality. That. And it's all just that's all just garbage. So I guess I'm not – Was the, is the trigger because we've already broken that line that we were looking at, or am yep. I supposed to see something in the prints that's my trigger? No, volume and price action. Remember, number one okay. trade. Do we need to see anything? No, <clears throat> I, no, I guess not. No, yeah. No. Okay. Not at all. This was just a nice, simple trade. Okay. Now, it's not really getting the legs that I would like to see, but it's got a lot of room down. You know, it's just so, not moving as quickly as we want to the downside. Well, I would have, yeah, I would have liked to seen a little bit. See that, see how that volume got bigger and it was a little bit more consistent, and it started getting a little bit more consistent at that big spot. I would have liked to seen a little bit more of a break, um, towards that 350 level. To be honest, um, but you know, where um, I'm trying to see your mouse. So right here. Okay, this volume right there started getting a little bit oh, more okay. consistently and coming in high. I would have liked to see a little yeah. bit more of a break towards this 350 in that area. But either way, either way, you had to pay more for confirmation, but this would still have been a trigger. It's just a little bit high above what the actual calculation would have been. Because if we look, what's our calculation? Uh, 3875. Oh, actually, no, this one's, well, I mean, yeah, that was kind a of false ruined. trigger, right? Kind of like they just kind of faked us out. Yeah, the volume, I thought it was this one for a second. I'm standing, but yeah, a little bit low actually, but it's still, you know what? I'm willing to take, because if you look at the stock, it's not a huge, you know, uh, it's not a huge mover. So I'm not really too worried about it, you know, about cutting my loss and it, having it run away from there. I still would have taken that 10 times out of 10. Okay. So like, I mean, when you say you would have taken that in, in theory here, like looking at what happened, you would be trying to get in a short right as it triggered under that orb line. Around thirty nine eighty nine, yes, 39, for, a number, for a number one trade, yes, for a number one trade. But then, what would happen when it started to come back up here? We'd have to get out, or we would hold on to see if this was just a quick bump up to come back down, or yeah, right now on our explosion. The high of the trigger is four third forty thirteen. Okay. So depending on where I got here, forty thirteen is my my spot. So. 
Oh, okay, okay. So you would try to get into the downward trend at 40, close to 43. No, no, no. You're saying if it gets above 4013, that we're in a place where we need to cut more. Yeah, so I would just cut the loss. Good. Real small okay. loss, just like right here. Boom, done. Yeah, I'm out. like now it's time. That's it. Okay, just, you know, we yeah. would have lost like seven cents. <laughs> yeah, rather than hold on for dollars of loss. I got it. Yeah, yeah. oh no, that's right away. The, the second it breaks the top of here, right there, because look at the consolidation we're in. It's got consolidated bars. I'm still going to take my shot there. I have no problem. It was still about a 75% trade. So at the end of the day, I'm just going to cut my loss right as soon as it breaks the spot. And gotcha. then not for nothing, but I am going to take this trade again at some point. I'm just going to be looking for, you know, for for more. A better trigger. Yeah, I mean, because we still it still needs to go to the downside to build. It, exactly. And if you look with this trigger, when we look at the volume, so it really should have been somewhere in like the 225,000 shares range. It was a little bit low. So we didn't even get a 10% trigger, but it was still the trade. I have no problem giving for the opportunity for a stock to run to do something, giving up seven to 10 cents ever. Because it, it's literally – now, don't get me wrong. If you give up 7 to 10 cents 30 times in a consolidation, then you have issues. Yeah, you, we've got to make sure we're not trading in a consolidation. That's that's the first mm -hmm. thing I try to make sure because I, I used to make that mistake of thinking, oh, we got – it's a 10-cent 10 10 move, but we're not moving anywhere. It's just bouncing. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, the, the trade was there. It was – you know, there's textbook within it. It's just it's more of a consolidated type trade. So I have to understand that based off its personality going into taking it. Is it worth it? But I, I, you know, for the possibility of how much it can pull back versus, mm -hmm. uh, you know, how controlled it is, I, like I said, my risk versus reward is there, like tenfold. And and the prints that came in while we were talking here, like the forty seventeen that was at three, and the minor level of ask at forty twenty five, and the forty thirty, um, this I get a little confused of how to because we've got bid and ask. Do we use this in our game plan of what we have originally, or do we kind of just let this flow through? Well, right now, what we're seeing, especially like these 4017 right at print personality, we're starting to see it have an ability to actually continue up before we get our pullback. This 40 okay. is going to have to pull back, but there's still getting buying coming into it. And it's not necessarily buying at like 40. Like you said, you see that 417, you see, you know, over four those over 40 spots coming into 30, it, it technically, the buying is there to go up. It's just a matter of when we're going to be able to get the actual, the actual trigger and the volume to continue down for them to be able to build. Got you. So now if I was like, just, you know, if I was after class, step away, if I'm going to watch this all day, I'm going to look for volume to get closer to that 250 or above for my trigger back to the downside. See, don't get caught up in that because this okay. that volume, that 250 vol, uh, 225 volume was coming from this pattern. That pattern oh, has now specific. been com that pattern has now been completed. Okay, so now it's time to look at it with a fresh look on that pattern. Okay, I got you. Exactly. So we're going to be right now. It's just consistent if you look at it. So technically, yeah. it would only need about 190. But what I do know is that. The last time 190 didn't really get it going, wasn't enough interest. So I'm actually going to be looking for something higher than that. So would you look for something like 300,000 ideally? See, three, three might be too high. Okay, because that'd be too go, high. If we go too high, then then it just ends up coming right back. Okay. You know, and this again, this is not an easy trading stock based off personality. The reason being, it's just very consolidated within its trading. Okay, the print okay. personality, the, the personality of the stock has not shown many, you know, large pullbacks at all. So when okay. we do get our pullback, it's, you know, it's going to have to be something that looks, you know, per, you would want it to look pretty obvious, but it's probably not going to. It's going to be one of those stocks that kind of floats and then, you know, after a nice, obviously, trigger bar and kind of keeps floating towards that downside. Okay. Okay. Two sixty-five average range is three twenty. It is a little bit skewed, but we're kind of getting to the point where you know we can start looking for it. We also want to start to see some people getting out. That doesn't hurt because it, it's not not having doesn't print a lot, but it's not having a hard time printing. Okay. 
And aside from like on the unfiltered time and sales, that that movement shows us retail. But do we we don't really need to look at that outside of anything? Like we don't do anything else with that, right? Which which one? The on- the unfiltered on the right. We just kind of, that that's just letting us know the speed of retail coming in and out, kind of right. I mean, I personally only watch this one. The only reason I use the left, the the filtered time at sales is if like I can pull up a stock so I can go back to see what happened and find my print personality. But when I'm okay. watching a stock, this mm-hmm. is the only thing I'm watching. I'm watching this time at sales. That's it. Oh, okay. That that's <laughs> that's why it's divided by a hundred. Because like when you look at it, nothing means anything to me. And look how much it's like you know a blind. When you put a little crank in one of the blinds, that's all your eyes go to. So as yeah. this time in sales is going, you can see the bigger prints easily. They just, you know, they stick out like a sore thumb. 17, 21, 23, 75, it's 100. So yeah. as this is going, 1,000. Like I know exactly when to stop, 1,200, because it just, you, it sticks out. 18,000, 12, 10, so on and so forth. Because if I just look at this, I'm going to be missing a lot of the speed of what's actually happening. So when speed increases, when speed decreases, I'm going to miss mm-hmm. a lot of value, you know, very important information within the stock if I'm not paying attention here. Okay. You know, it, it's hard because when we when I teach, if I, it would be impossible. If I had to keep going back and forth every time with the regular time in sales, we'd never get anything accomplished. It would take four hours to ever actually, you know, get to understanding why a stock moved. So when I yeah. teach, I'm always going to be using this because this is really what the important stuff is. And then we add the, uh, you know, the, obviously the controlling prints and the bigger market makers are always going to be more important. But there's a lot of very important pieces of information that happened just, like I said, the speed. Like I could tell coming into this 40 right now, speed just increased. Yeah, I, I, that's what I'm noticing. We're, we're kind of picked up a good uptick there. Mm-hmm. So that's I like to see that, especially in you know wanting to break it. I don't want speed to slow down. Yeah, because 40 is going to be very – look how strong 40 is. I mean this thing is as solid as a rock. Yeah. They're 402s. Yeah, I mean, they're just, they're, yeah, 41s, 39, yeah. You see what I mean? So you got to, you know, <laughs> it's harder to watch. That's why, you know, I always I always put my, my time in sales like up here or something just to give myself more room so I can see it as it's happening. But at the end of the day, it's really only important if it's, you know, if you're looking at everything, you got to understand what retails yeah. around it, you know, so on and so forth. And then stocks that really have all in between the bid and ask, most of everything you see here is nothing you can really use. So then it, it becomes a tool to use as bursts of prints. Like, for instance, right here, if I look at this, these prints right here, these are this 1100 shares on a stock that doesn't trade any bigger shares. 1100 share execution at this 87 is huge because it's so hard to execute in large blocks. You know what I'm saying? So with the really thin orders, thin print personality, knowing the what you know the bursts that we're seeing coming in, the, this might be a market maker in one stock. Well, where we go? I lost it. Okay, right here. This might be a market maker in one stock, where in another stock, it's it doesn't mean anything, like this stock. No problem. Hopefully, you can still hear me, but. But yes, speed is big. Understanding where retail's coming in is real big. You know, during a spot, if a stock's moving and we're not seeing anything but like little retail bursts actually moving that stock, well, there, there, those people can get their money taken at some point. So something to think about. Hey, Rich, I'm sorry. I got disconnected. We're still having some internet issues here. Yeah, no problem at all. Um. You know, I was just saying that, you know, understanding those... You know how in one stock those 87 prints could be a market maker versus in a stock like this they mean absolutely nothing. These 80 the 87s on the uh, yeah what I was just stock. they were just prints that I was yeah okay. I mean they're okay, gotcha. let's see but they're on the unfiltered side right that's what I just yes to exactly say. but okay. it, it was 1100 shares that was actually executed in reality it did not it doesn't look like that because it's all in smaller shares so you wouldn't see 1100 pop up over here even though that's Ooh. actually what the execution was 
Okay, oh, right okay. here. See right here? This is 1,100 shares. Someone gotcha. executed that as 1,100 shares. It just showed up as, well, you know, as 100, 800. 800. Yeah. Exactly. But in a stock so, that's not showing any prints above 1,000, you see something like that, that's big for an execution for that person to even be able to do because it's just, it's again, it's relative. Gotcha. So I... I... I'm a, I think I'm either confusing myself or maybe I just didn't get. So these are by 100, right? So like you said, that's 1,100 shares. On the left here, the 20 packet, is that indicative of 2,000 shares? Exactly. Yep. Okay. Yep. So one is 100, 20 is, uh, or uh, 10 is 1,000. Okay. okay. Gotcha. So essentially, you just add two zeros to whatever the number is. Okay. Got it. Just wanted to make sure I had that correct too. Okay. All right. All right. All right, BJ. Well, absolutely phenomenal job for your first time. You got to start getting, and I talked talk to you about this, but you need to start, and everyone in the elite, start putting yourself out there. All right. If you're, you might be thinking it in a way where a little tweak can change, you know, change everything. So make sure you guys are utilizing that. I will talk to everyone in the chat and have.